Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is John, otherwise known as Megahertz, and today I'm going to be implementing a dash mechanic using Bolt Visual Scripting on my existing player controller. It's very similar to the dash mechanic I implemented in a previous video with a few minor tweaks here and there. If you'd like to have my complete player controller, I would strongly encourage you to go back to the start of this series. If Bolt is new to you, I would recommend going to my channel and picking out an easier build where I show off how to build flow macros step by step. If, however, Bolt Visual Scripting isn't new to you and you'd like to know how to implement a player controller in your game, then I'll just dash ahead with this build. You're going to need a few macros for this build. In a previous video, I made a move variable force macro, which we're going to use in today's dash mechanic. And if you'd like to know how that works, just go back and watch video two in this series. And you're also going to need two new macros, the can dash macro and the dash macro. You're also going to need four new player variables. You're going to need a can dash boolean. Uh, go ahead and set that to true. You're going to need a dash cooldown. And uh, that's a float, 1.5 seconds on that. Dash speed, go ahead and make that a float and set it to 12. You can adjust that however you like later on. And a dash time float at 0.5. Next, you're going to need to go ahead and set up an input for the dash button by going to Edit, Project, Settings, and under Input Manager, just if uh, whatever that number says for you, just go ahead and increase it by one, go down to the bottom, and rename the bottom one that popped up, Dash, and I have mine set to a C button. You can set it to whatever you want. Um, uh, we're going to make sure that, that is a key or mouse button down on the X axis, and then your button should be ready to roll. If you'd like to use any of these sprites that I have in this player controller, I'll put a link in the description below. But probably one of the things you're going to recognize is that there's not an, a dash animation in this sprite sheet. So what I actually did is I used the cast and the cast loop and I set the sample to 10. And so that is what it looks like. After you get your dash animation where you're happy with it, it will drop it in the animator on this uh, entry base layer. You're going to drag it into regular mode, and I just dragged my dash animation right here. Um, you're also going to need a new parameter called dashing, so this is a bool, so just click this button, bool, and then name it dashing. Um, and the following are all of the transitions that you're going to need. Um, you're going to need an any state to dash and again we're using that because while we're in the dash state there's only one way you can really get into that it's basically saying that any animation that we're running we can change and transition from that animation to the dash animation you only get the dash animation whenever you press one button so that's that's why i use that you're going to just from any state to dash you're just going to make dashing parameter true then you're going to need a dash to idle, dash to walk, dash to run, and a dash to fall because if you dash off the side of a cliff, you want it to go to the to the fall animation. So these are all of the parameters that you're going to need to set up with all the bulls, and um, just go ahead and set that up, and we'll continue. Once you get that finished, it should look something like this. Let's uh, talk about the bolt side of things. What we're going to do is I had you make a dash uh, macro, and what you're going to do is you're going to go to your player non-combat and just in this non-combat state just grab this dash and just drop it right in there right here is where it's going to be and then you're going to make a transition from airborne to dash because if we're jumping off a wall we want to be able to transition to that dash by pushing the, the dash button then you're going to make a transition from master to dash um, inside of master we are going to um, implement that dash button which i have right here so just on button input and name it dash uh, or whatever you named your dash input button on the input settings. Then I had that uh, dash um, macro that I had you make. This is very simple to read, but basically it is that if our player variable can dash is true, and if we are moving, you don't have to have that. I just felt like it needed to be moving to dash. You can just take that out if you want and just run it right up into this branch. Um, but if both of those variables are true, then it should uh, trigger our custom event dash. And so um, from master, I have this uh, set up with a custom argument. This little transition just says, hey, dash, and it'll trigger the transition. It goes to dash. And inside of dash, I have a couple things happening here. First and foremost, um, I'm going to set the dash animator bool, which is right here. This dashing animator bool that we set up. Set that to true. Um, I stop the velocity, so if it's moving in a direction and we dash, I want it to kind of just stop for a second, or just a split second, and then 
dash in a direction so that's why I did that and then our gravity scale needs to be set to zero during that dash mechanic so that it will stay in the air if we're mid-air just temporarily so that's on interstate and then we have a sequence one of the sequence flow flow sequences is going to that the other part is getting the direction and then it is going to add variable force which you should have seen this in a previous video um, it's very simple to set up it takes our direction and it multiplies it times the dash speed which is a variable that we just set up and according to whether or not um, the scale which is right here if this is a positive number it's going to um, add force or an impulse to uh, our player controller and uh, it's going to go in a positive direction on the x uh, multiplier uh, on the x axis so uh, if it's less than zero if this number is less than zero it'll send us back the other direction it sets the variable the can dash to off um, and the reason it's doing that is because I have a little cooldown timer before I want it to to end that little uh, dash um, effect in the air and then when it's all done which we have that dash time set to I believe 0.5 you can set that to whatever you like if you want a longer dash this is where you do it you just raise that number and then it goes to dash end when it goes into dash end um, it just triggers this custom event right here and then it goes back to our master state now on master state I uh, I have implemented a an on an on inner state and uh, what this is doing is it's basically saying I want you to wait that dash cooldown which remember we had it set to 1.5 seconds uh, keep in mind that it's going to add the dash cooldown plus the dash time which is why I have it set uh, to 1.5 instead of a even number uh, I want two seconds for when we push the dash button to uh, where it will reset and push the dash button again and once it's completed it will reset our dash variable so that whenever we push this button down here uh, we can actually dash again. There's actually one more thing that you need to set up and that is is that in our airborne state because Remember when we jump uh, we slide against the wall and we jump we go into an airborne state and um, I want to be able to dash immediately after I jump off a wall That's just gonna give it a little bit of flavor um, in controlling your player in the air and so um, I went ahead and had you set this up in a previous video um, but in that um, airborne uh, state we're just gonna copy that same dash mechanic that same dash button that we had in our uh, master um, Macro and we're just gonna put it right here, and it's gonna essentially do the exact same thing Okay, you should now have a dash mechanic with your player controller that has a cooldown on it and resets when once it's finished If you're running into any troubles with this build be sure to hit me up on discord And I'll see if I can give you a hand in the next video. We're going to begin tackling our combat system. Hope to see you there